Please join me in welcoming Whoopi Goldberg. I'm your second proof that black holes do exist. <laughs> Good. I wasn't sure, you know, <laughs> but I, I've never heard the phrase black hole used so much, it made me so happy. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to be here. I, I've always wanted to come in. So when I got this invitation, uh, I thought this would be a, a good time for me to come in and see what you all do. And then I get to, you know, sort of present Jack with an, an honor, this, I mean, I love dinosaurs. I, I have lots of questions about them, and I can tell you that nobody knows more. He understands, I asked him tonight, is it possible for Jurassic Park to happen? He said no. <laughs> and it made me feel better. <laughs> so tonight I'm honored to present Liberty Science Liberty Science Center's 2016 Genius Award to our second honoree, Jack Horner. Blah, 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 that's what it says. <laughs> Let's take a look at the video. Excellent. Jack Horner's career in paleontology began in 1975 in New Jersey, when he was hired as a low-level technician in Princeton University's Natural History Museum. In 1978, while doing field work in Montana's Badlands, he and a friend excavated parts from 15 baby duck-billed dinosaurs and uncovered the first evidence that dinosaurs nested and cared for their young. Horner was a pioneer of the then wild idea that dinosaurs traveled in herds and were more like birds than reptiles. I was fortunate in finding things. I wasn't very good at reading things. In fact, I don't read much of anything. I am extremely dyslexic, and so reading is the hardest thing I do. Jack Horner never graduated from the University of Montana because he couldn't pass the foreign language reading test. Recently, he's been working on retro-engineering a dinosaur from its closest living relative. If you look at dinosaur hands, a velociraptor has claws on it, but as you can see, the pigeon or a chicken or anything else, like a bird, has the wing. But the cool thing is, is that if you look in the embryo, as the embryo is developing, the hand actually has the three fingers, the three digits. But a gene turns on that actually fuses those together. And so what we're looking for is that gene. We want to stop that gene from turning on, fusing those hands together, so we can get a chicken that hatches out with a three-fingered hand. And the same goes for the tails. We know that in embryo, as the animal is developing, it actually has a relatively long tail. But a gene turns on and resorbs the tail. What we're trying to do, really, is take our chicken, modify it, and make a chickenosaurus. In 1986, the University of Montana, from which Horner had flunked out seven times as an undergraduate, awarded him an honorary doctorate of science. Steven Spielberg chose Horner to be the technical consultant on the Jurassic Park movies and based the character Dr. Neil Grant in part on him. In 2013, Horner received the Romer Simpson Prize, the highest award from the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology. Today we honor him with Liberty Science Center's 2016 Genius Award. Talk to me? Yeah, I might talk to you. This is really cool. You know, this is not as cool as digging dinosaurs, though, you know, and I was digging dinosaurs out in your backyard. We were. We dumped 35 tons of sand next to Liberty Science Center on Wednesday. We made 60 life-size 
replicas of the bones of dinosaurs Jack had found, and he led a whole bunch of kids from the area on a dinosaur dig, and we'll be doing this to June 10th. We should have all these guys dig them up. <laughs> exactly. So did you know when you started as a paleontologist that you would be such a kid magnet? A kid magnet? Well, you know, I'm, I'm just a kid. I know most scientists are. Pardon? Most scientists are. Yes, I think so. No, I, you know, kids love dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. You know, what's there not to love? Who doesn't love dinosaurs? Anybody? There you go. All right. So I understand, though, that not all kids love everything you do. That you've been talking about T Rex, and you've said, you know, he's not a predator, he's not a fierce predator. Maybe he didn't even kill anything, that he was a scavenger. And I understand you've even gotten hate mail from kids? Yeah, the sixth graders don't like that idea at all. You know, I, I try to use T-Rex as a way to show that how science works, that you can't just make a, you know, you just can't assume anything in science, that you actually have to find evidence and try to test your hypotheses. And for the most part, kids like that, except when it comes to T-Rex. They want, they want T-Rex to chase things around and eat people. So you're not the only scientist that children have a love-hate relationship with. Let's take a look at the video. Hi, everybody. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Jack, I've heard about the angry mail your once-adoring fans are sending you for demoting T-Rex from king predator to full-time scavenger. But don't worry. You should see the hate mail I got, all from pissed-off school children. They blamed me for demoting Pluto even though I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, I was an accessory. Here we revealed to the world that Pluto had a more deserving status called dwarf planet, but that didn't stop the angry letters. No, it didn't. Here's some examples. Dear Mr. Tyson, if you make Pluto a planet again, all the science books will be right. Some people like Pluto, and if it doesn't exist, then they don't have a favorite planet. Please write back, but not in cursive, because I can't read in cursive. I have a file cabinet of these letters. How about this one? Pluto is a planet. I hate you. Love, Nadia. So Jack, don't worry. I co-certify with the Liberty Science Center that you're a rare breed, and they're giving you the Genius Award goes a long way to ensure that nobody in the future demotes you. Congratulations. So Neil couldn't join us tonight because he's on a Burgundy tasting tour in Burgundy, France. So tough work being the nation's astronomer laureate. And Jack, you know, I would not be so worried about what kids think if you're demoting T-Rex. I'd be worried about what T-Rex thinks. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>